Hi everybody, how you doing? This is Alex with the Linux Tube. We're coming at you today with a distribution review. Uh, the distribution that we're looking at is Nobara um, from the Nobara project. It is uh, based off of Fedora 36. Um, and basically, if you haven't heard of Nobara, it is like the pop OS of Fedora. Um, it is a distribution that is um, game, or ma aimed mainly at gaming. Um, in fact, um, the distribution creator, Thomas Kreider, is also known as another small moniker in the entire uh, Linux community uh, by the name of um, Glorious Eggroll. And his whole thing is he started working at uh, Red Hat as a senior engineer, and then he became a member of the Lutris development team. And then he actually created the Proton Glorious Egg Roll edition. So this guy pretty much so knows it all about the whole entire Linux gaming strife that has happened. So he pretty much so has led the way on a lot of the, the Linux gaming uh, and Proton has really brought that layer that he created, brought along a lot of games to Linux. So this guy knows his stuff when it comes to Linux gaming. And uh, so this is an exciting distribution because it's got his hands written all over it. And, you know, he's literally made it a, a, a decent distribution. Now let's take a look at it real quick. And so here's their webpage, the Nobara project.org. And uh, as you can see, what is Nobara project? No, Nobara project to put it simply is a modified version of Fedora Linux with user friendly fixes added to it. Fedora is a very cool workstation OS. However, anything involving any kind of third party or proprietary package is usually absent from the fresh install. A typical point and click user can often struggle with l how to get a lot of things working beyond the basic browser and office documents that came with the OS without having to take extra time to search documentation. Some of the important things that are missing from Fedora, especially with regards to gaming include wine dependencies, OBS studios, third party codecs, packages such as those for the G streamer, third party drivers, such as Nvidia drivers, and even small package fixes here and there. This project aims to fix those issues and offer better gaming streaming and content creation experience out of the box. That being said, this distribution is definitely geared towards gamers and content creators. More importantly, we want to be more point and click friendly and avoid the basic user from having to open the terminal. It is not that the terminal and or terminal usage are a bad thing by any means. Power users are more off using the terminal, but for new users, point and click ease of use is usually expected. Um, it should also be clarified that this distribution is not to be considered a Fedora spin. They are a completely independent project from Fedora, and there are no Fedora developers or parties directly involved. We use Fedora packages, code, and repositories. That's the extent of it. So he's pretty much so created this based off of Fedora. So it's an independent one. So that, that's cool. It just uses their RPMs for their packages. It comes with three different flavors. It comes with the official Nobara, which is a modified version of GNOME or GNOME. It comes with the regular standard GNOME and the KDE Nobara uh, variant. So, and of course, if you read further, I'm not going to read it all, but there's lots of bi uh, um, bugs and fixes. And then also um, uh, general usage improvements. In other words, what he did to to make it better. The one thing is the Yum, uh, Yum Extender, the Yumx DNF provider is a front end GUI for the DNF package manager. So it's kind of cool. It's got like its own, you know, you know, add or remove software. So anyhow, it's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and close it out. Let's take a look at it. So this is what you're greeted with right here. Once you log in, this is what you're looking at. It's beautiful desktop background. If you right click on it, you get your drop down menu, but you can arrange different things around. You know, you can change your background picture. We'll click on it, and this is what comes up. Uh, if you look, you got you can switch between your appearances, your styles of light and dark. Um, it's got some other pretty cool backgrounds right here. This one looks kind of cool. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Then we can click on this one. That one looks kind of kind of avant-garde. You know, it's different. 
really nice. I like this one. The original one that it comes with is pretty cool, but then this one's pretty cool too. I like this one too. I mean, they're all beautiful. I mean, if you can look, I mean, they're they're very beautiful. And then, of course, in your settings panel over here on the side, you've got all your usual stuff. You got your network, Bluetooth, appearance. Um, since we're already in the settings panel, might as well get to it. Uh, multitasking, you know, your applications. If you click in there, you can do different things with your different applications. Um, online accounts. Uh, this is where you can add like your Gmail, YouTube, you know, all that good stuff. Next Cloud, Microsoft. Why would you want to add that? We don't know, but anyhow, you can do all that. Uh, also, sharing. Um, if you want to do file sharing and stuff like that, you can do all that kind of stuff. Sound. Um, now, there's something weird going on. I don't know if it's because of the virtual manager that I'm in or as it said on his webpage, if you read further down the webpage, this is still a new thing and he's working out a lot of a lot of just a lot of bugs on this distribution and i think i may have found one and it's the sound in vert manager as you can see it detects the hardware for it see it detects it all it's all set up that way and when you test the sound you get sound but it's kind of garbled and it's got like a dual layer mix on it it's very strange in fact let's open up firefox go to my youtube page And we're gonna search. We're gonna kick on click on my latest video about Q four OS. And listen, it's really a weird garbage. Hey everybody, this is the creators of the Linux tube. I'm Sean. Hot mess. Oh. Today we got a video from a user suggestion. Yeah, it, it's strange. I think that's a bug. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I've tried adjusting different settings in there. I've tried doing everything, and it's still the same. I even changed to like a dummy output and removed every all the hardware and reinstalled hardware. I removed pipewire because it's got pipewire installed. Removed it, reinstalled it. Still did not fix it. But that's so far the only issue. Now, if you go, you got your panel at the bottom. You got a couple of desktop icons over here, which is your home and your trash. If you click on your home, oh, I hit the activities. If you click on home, it opens right up to your home directory. Uh, I like this. This is really cool. It uses files for your for your you know um, file manager. This is pretty pretty cool. I like the I like the layout of it. I like the um, the icons that it's got going in here it's pretty awesome like i said it's still a work in progress he's got many many more things that he plans on changing down the road like uh, creating its own theme which is really cool he wants to come up with a more different like glorious more egg roll theme i, I don't know it, what his plans are but i do know that he plans on adding more themes to it and making it more customizable even though for for gnome 42 this is very customized it's it's pretty awesome uh in the panel you got your your launcher then you got pinned here you got firefox and you got calendar you got files and then you got the software store right let's click on the launcher here this is your typical kind of new gnome launcher which has got your favorites here what's really cool is this arc menu this is what it, he's calling it arc menu settings right and if you look you got tabs at the very bottom here you've got general which gives you your general display options where you can move the panel wherever you want you can create hotkeys and you can do standalone, you know, runner menu. Uh, also, you can click on the layouts tab. This is kind of cool. So if you click on this little uh, side wing over here, it opens up and you can do different things to the, to the actual arc menu that you're currently using, right? Now, there are other avail available menu layouts, the traditional menu layouts, which is really nice. You got the arc menu, brisk, whisker, budgie, mint, and gnome right now if you go back under the modern menu layouts then you've got even more like they even have a, a windows one um it, it it's pretty cool there's tons of layouts that are in here touch menu layouts for like tablets i guess or touch screen uh, laptops i mean this is insane i mean even the launcher layouts you can change, right? I mean, alternative menu layouts too. Like there's this one here that's the Raven one, which is different. But anyhow, I mean, it's 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 highly, 
highly customizable in that aspect then you click here you got your applications at the very bottom and this has got like your favorites if you got it you know anything that's all your pin stuff and frequent apps that you've used right and then so forth and so on but if you go under games here you'll see that it's got the go overlaid already installed for your vulcan you know shaders and stuff uh it's got lutris installed right out the box it's got proton installed right out the box and steam set up right out the box now this is definitely you don't have to set up any of this using or any of the you know dependencies or anything in the background uh via terminal because like you said it's all designed to be point and click so i mean it is it is pretty cool how it comes already loaded oh the iso is three gigs so that alone will tell you that it's pretty much so loaded with everything for graphics it's got blender photos and LibreOffice draw and it's also got you know hp support for your hp printers internet it comes with uh firefox and steam obviously and of course your connections uh then for office it's got LibreOffice installed uh your programming it's got gnome boxes right out of it right it right into it so um you actually have a virtual machine completely installed on here for you i mean the only thing he's missing is pretty much so bottles uh i think sound and video you've got cheese k live obs you got the pavu you got rhythm box videos and vlc system tools you got boxes the media writer which is your usb um bootable usb uh, creator and your software center uh utilities you're looking at a plethora of things your disk usage is gnome disks which is awesome partitioner and it's got your system monitor and your regular gnome terminal and in other, we have oh, your HP graphics tools, your settings, and your Yum extender. So, I mean, pretty cool. It's it, it, it comes pretty well easy to use out the box. And then right here, you've got your actual files where you can go to, like, your documents, your music, my pictures, videos, which, you know, opens up the directory, which, which it goes to. Then, of course, like I said, you've got your pin stuff, which is files. And then over here, what I like about it is it comes where, just like in Pop, you can actually talk... Oh, Dang it. You can actually toggle tiling windows. So it actually has tiling window manager and you can even set exceptions with it and you could actually do shortcuts for it and even set hint colors. If, if you're wondering about tiling window managers, I, that's what I use my daily driver. I use I three, but the reality of it is, is this can give you a nice little, you know, try out an idea of what Tiling Windows Manager is to let you know uh, if you're new to Linux and deciding to come to this to let you know whether you might like a Tiling Window Manager or not. I love them. They're very efficient. They're very fast. They're very clean and they're very lightweight. They don't use a lot of resources. So, but that's just my shameless plug for Tiling Window Manager. At any instance, you can try that there. Uh, it's got your calendar app here, which all which has also got your notification center right next to it. Right. If you click the Do Not Disturb, it turns off your uh, notifications also what i like about the calendars it's got the weather and the location of where i live i live in tacoma washington i am not afraid to tell people that but at any instance then of course you got your regular old system tray which has got your power menu you know your actual internet connection and type also it's got your power which is nice you can change between power saver as well as you know balanced for your power settings right and then of course it's got all your standard you know uh, pavu control which is your volume manager for your sound which like i said everything that i see is really the only bugs that i see or know is the sound issue that it has uh, that may be fixed here pretty soon because it is definitely one of those rolling type releases that's what fedora is it's always using the bleeding edge current stuff uh, i strongly suggest that you go to their web page and look at their documentation because they did have for nvidia drivers and also some amd gpu drivers that, to enable certain things for the newer cards because they want you to have some newer cards uh, and software and, and that could be another issue with the sound as well uh, i didn't like i said this is just an overview to, to kind of like let you guys get a look and taste for it and decide if you want to boot it up and try it you know either in a virtual machine or try it on real hardware but uh either way this is Novara fedora 36 ba based off Novara Th fedora 36 uh projects uh distribution uh i see this as a huge strong up-and-comer competitor to actually pop os pop os is pretty much so 
known for its gaming, high gaming, you know, capabilities, how it's set up and, you know, promoted as that by the System76 guys. This is definitely a contender. As much ground as Fedora's been gaining lately in popularity, this, this just makes sense for those people that are wanting to try Fedora and have their gaming at the tips and the clicks of their fingers. This is the one for you guys. If you have any, you know, comments or things that you, advice you want to give on this, please drop them in the comments. Also, if you have anything you want me to review or you want me to talk about on one of my videos, drop that in the comments as well please like and subscribe also share with your friends this channel We're trying to build up our database and our fan base um, you can find us on all the social media platforms such as facebook twitter and uh instagram at the linux tube on those guys that's the name of it the linux tube and then also we're on patreon.com the underscore linux underscore tube please become a member and friend of the show over there please uh we're we would greatly appreciate you know whatever it is that you guys can give over there uh i'm humbled you know to receive anything believe me I don't, it's it's just much appreciated and, and and a great help uh to keep these kind of things happening also just want to tell you that uh uh if you become a, a a show member and subscriber over there that you will also get access early access to other things i'm in the process of uploading all the videos over there and you guys will be getting the newer and current videos dropping over there first and then they'll be posted to youtube a day or two later uh with that being said thank you guys for all your support we really appreciate it this wouldn't be possible without you guys clicking on watching and liking them so the videos so please keep it up guys hey you guys enjoy linux keep linuxing and have a great day